Sorry. I just did that with while being muted, didn't I? One idiot. And now my script has gone off. <laughs> oh dear. Good morning. We are watching the uh, opening of Parliament. Oh, it's just opening. Charles hasn't spoken yet. He's due to. Um, so yes, this live on the BBC if you want to watch that. Nicky Campbell is um, the replacement for Hugh Edwards, who obviously used to be the um, the BBC man for all of the events, you know, the opening of Parliament, as that is. Or the announcement of the Queen's death. Anyway, they've, they've replaced him with Nicky Campbell, so... What a choice. I wouldn't have chosen Nicky Campbell, but there you go. I don't know what he usually does. He's usually on um, BBC Radio 5, I think. Anyway, let's take a look at some other news. <laughs> and uh, GB News was making the most of its newest sign-in yesterday, all day. The right-wing channel reputedly played footage of Boris Johnson in Israel. And what for? The reason? You tell me. Uh, his own personal reasons. <laughs> Typical Boris, an opportunistic swine. Uh, seen in these pictures, higher uh, with Australia's uh, former Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. So why is he in Israel? I, I can't help but think with Boris that the end of his nose, the tip of his nose, looks like a Jap's eye. Yes, yes, can you see that? Yes, oh... <laughs> Ooh, anyway. Ooh, that was dubbed Britain's loneliest sheep has been rescued from a remote shore <laughs> uh, in the Scottish Highlands. God bless her. The sheep, now named Fiona, uh, had been stranded at the foot of cliffs on the uh, Cromarty Firth for at least two years. An animal welfare charity had said any attempts to rescue her would be incredibly complex. But a group of five farmers managed to haul her up a steep slope. Uh, they sheared her overgrown fleece and handed her over to a farm park finally for weeks the news has been bleating <laughs> bleating on about this bloody sheep uh, at least she's um had a shear although i'm not sure looking at those pictures that fiona was too happy about being moved you know it took me ages to get down that slope poor poor sheep Croatia's foreign minister sparked controversy by greeting his German counterpart with a kiss at an EU minister's meeting in Berlin. <laughs> uh, Gordon Gallagher Ga Radman uh, shook hands with German foreign minister Alalina Borbok, then leaned forward to kiss her. He had been criticised in some Croatian media reports with women's rights activist Rada Boric describing the incident as highly inappropriate. Mr. Glech Radman uh, defended the moment as a warm human approach to a colleague. He said it was maybe an awkward moment and apologised to whoever took it that way. Let's take a look. <laughs> Uh, just Stop Oil protesters uh, have been arrested after smashing glass covering a Diego Velezquez painting at the National Gallery in London as police detained dozens of others who blocked Whitehall. Uh, two activists targeted the glass on the Rockby Venus painting with safety hammers uh, before they were arrested on suspicion of criminal damage. Uh, the artwork, which was painted by Velezquez in the 1600s, was slashed by the suffragettes Mary Richardson in 1914. One of those involved on Monday they said women did not get the vote by voting it's time for deeds not words <laughs> uh, the Metropolitan Police said that at least 40 activists who were slow marching in Whitehall were also detained and that the road was cleared after traffic was stopped for a brief period uh, the activists laid down on roads and lined up on pavements some were placed on and around the cenotaph by police according to protesters and an officer at the scene Tommy Robinson has had his Twitter uh, his account reinstated on social media platform X, formerly Twitter. Robinson, whose real name is Stephen Yaxley Lennon, was reinstated alongside Katie Hopkins. Hopkins was banned in 2020 and Robinson's account was suspended in 2018. Twitter accused both of breaking its rules on hateful conduct. A number of controversial figures have been allowed back on the platform since it was brought by Elon Musk last year. In November 2020, M Mr Musk, a self-styled free speech 
Absolutist announced a general amnesty to suspended accounts that had not broken the law or engaged in egregious spam. Hopkins, a former LBC presenter and male online columnist, had repeatedly attracted criticism for her views, including an incident where she compared migrants to cockroaches and another where she claimed the photograph of a drowned three-year-old Syrian refugee had been staged. She had more than one million Twitter followers before her permanent suspension in 2020. The ban was for violating the platform's hateful conduct policy, but it did not, however, say which of Miss Hopkins' tweets had prompted the action. Robinson founded the far-right English Defence League, best known for protests against what it called radical Islam, but stepped down in 2013. In July 2021, Robinson was ordered to pay £100,000 in libel damages to a Syrian schoolboy who was filmed being attacked in a playground. In two videos posted to Facebook, Robinson made a number of false accusations about the boy. As I said, the King's speech has taken place. Uh, the government's policies for the upcoming year is about to be unveiled during the King's speech with a pledge to put criminal justice at the heart of his plans. Not the cost of living then, no? Okay, shall we take a look at the live feed? <laughs> I think we shall. <laughs> Who's this? Black Rod? Black Rod? Black Rod? No Black Rod. It's Black Rod. Open the door. Black Rod! Okay. Uh, the speech devised by the Prime Minister but delivered by the King will include details of a sentencing bill to ensure whole life orders are handed down to the most horrific murderers and that rapists spend more time in jail. There will also be a pledge for a criminal justice bill to give tough sentences to grooming gang members and to make murdering a partner at the end of a relationship a statutory aggravating factor at sentencing and there will be a promise to continue work on the victims and prisoners bill which will include stopping parole for the worst offenders and preventing them from marrying in prison nothing about the cost of living then no okay yes oh there he is king charles let's hand over to the bbc <laughs> That is why my government's priority is to make the difficult but necessary long-term decisions to change this country for the better. My minister's focus is on increasing economic growth and safeguarding the health and security of the British people for generations to come. My government will continue to take action to bring down inflation to ease the cost of living for families and help businesses fund new jobs and investment. That's the King's speech there. Why can I still hear it? <laughs> Sorry. I'm a little bit rusty this morning. God. I'm not muted, am I? No. Right. So, petrol theft <laughs> has risen sharply in Britain according to new data. And it could be down to systematic criminal activity. Figures gathered by the RAC Foundation show there were 39,563 incidents between July and September this year, a 77% rise from 22,335 over the same period last year. Uh, that's also a fourfold increase from 8,558 incidents in those three months in 2019. The British Oil Security Syndicate which uh, campaigns to reduce crime on four courts, estimates these incidents cost filling stations an average of £10,500 each per year. Uh, most of the incidents are likely to relate to drive-offs, also referred to as bilking, uh, when someone fills up their vehicle without paying and then leaves. Mm. Have you ever bilked? <laughs> Uh, the government has announced plans to reinstate EU equality laws before they expire at the end of the year, admitting the move is required to avoid a clear gap in protections for workers. Damn. Uh, it follows questions over whether some employment protections related to things like equal pay and maternity leave would be scrapped from January when the re 
obtained EU law bill comes into effect. The controversial legislation, also known as the Brexit Freedoms Bill, will dispense with hundreds of Brussels-derived laws still on British statute books. It will also end the supremacy of EU law over UK law, erasing previous case law principles. Trade union and employment lawyers had warned uh, this would create uncertainty over key protections for British workers which derive from the EU and don't exist in British law. The British government said its update today means that necessary protections are clearly stated in our domestic legislation. One legal expert welcomed the announcement but said it raised legitimate questions around what gains had been made from post-Brexit sovereignty if EU laws are simply going to be replicated. Uh, train operators will be forced to guarantee that 40% of a normal timetable will run on strike days under a law to be introduced to Parliament today. Uh, the minimum service level regulations will make sure that certain priority routes can remain open, the government said, although it was unclear which journeys uh, would be covered. Similar rules will be introduced for border force, which will have to ensure staffing levels will be at a level that means they are no less effective than normal. Ambulance workers in England will also be bound by minimum service regulations during strike action so that they will always respond to life-threatening cases or if there is no clinical alternative. Uh, even without strikes, ambulances are not always able to attend all calls. Poverty levels in the UK are simply not acceptable and the government is violating international law. The United Nations Poverty Envoy has said ahead of a visit to the country this week when he will urge ministers to increase welfare spending. <laughs> uh, Oliver de Schutter, the UN's Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights, cited research showing universal credit payments of £85 a week for single adults over 25 were grossly inefficient and described the UK's main welfare system as a leaking bucket. In an interview with The Guardian five years after his predecessor, Philip Alston angered the Conservative government by accusing it of the systematic immiserization of a significant part of the British population, the Belgian lawyer risked a fresh confrontation by saying things have got worse. The government hit back insisting that it had not broken international law, that absolute poverty had fallen since the Conservatives took power and that it was helping thousands into work. Oh, sorry, sorry. The report said nothing about work. That's how thick this government are. He's talking about welfare. Helping thousands back into work does not help people out of poverty if they are on welfare. <laughs> uh, work more. That's all they say. This this Tory piece of shit. Work more. And if you've not got jobs, your fault. You're in poverty. And if you're in work and you're in poverty, work more hours. That's what these bastards say. And welfare isn't just for the unemployed, by the way. What about people that have children? Child tax credit or child support? Does that exist anymore? I don't think so. De Shutter said the UK had signed an international convenient that uh, created a duty to provide a level of social protection which ensures an inadequate uh, standard of living, but it was being broken with welfare payments falling behind costs for the poorest people. According to the Joseph Roundtree Foundation, in 2020, 3.8 million people experienced destitution, which is struggling to afford to meet their most basic physical needs, i.e. staying warm, dry, clean or fed. Uh, this included about 1 million children. It was almost two and a half times the number of people in 2017. Mm. Wow. The Conservative peer, Michelle Moan, uh, has acknowledged for the first time that she was involved with a company that was awarded government's PPE contracts worth £200 million during the COVID pandemic. Lady Moan's husband, let me show you him, uh, Douglas Barrowman, uh, has also acknowledged for the first time that he was involved in the company PPE 
MedPro. A representative of Barrowman told The Guardian that the Isle of Wight based businessman was an investor in PPE MedPro and chaired and led the operation to supply personal protective equipment. The admissions raised questions about years of denials from the couple. Until now, Moan and Barrowman have consistently and emphatically denied to The Guardian via lawyers that they were involved in the company. The Department for Health and Social Care is suing PPE MedPro for the full return of the £122 million it paid for the surgical gowns but never used, claiming they were unsafe for use in the NHS. The company is defending the claims. Of course it is. Do you remember? And in the time of September, uh, Carol Vaudman, uh went off on one on this morning about um, Michelle Moan. They used to be mates. Anyway... I uploaded the video to my TikTok and let me show you. <laughs> now, I cannot talk about useless PPE without also talking about Michelle Moan, who was brought into the House of Lords as a Baroness by David Cameron. We know she has taken leave of absence without losing the Tory whip to start with, because she was actively involved, as it goes, uh, with a company called PPE MedPro. Now, Michelle Moan, I knew many years ago and then dropped her like a stone as soon as I realised what kind of person she was. Sue me, Michelle. She uh, lives in the Isle of Man with her husband, Doug Barrowman, who has been involved with numerous, and it's all accounted, it's all in the press. Cameron, can I just say she's not here to defend herself? No, she's herself not here either. to defend herself, but I'm repeating what has been said in the press and has been proven to be true. Yeah. Where the guy, Anthony Page, who worked for Knox Group, which is owned by Michelle Moan's husband, was uh, awarded, they only established as a company, registered as a company, days after she recommended them through Michael Gove and Lord Agnew through this VIP lane. Now, 50 contracts were given and they were all recommended by Tories, none of them through the VIP lane by any other political party. We all know it's a scandal. She, uh, so there were two contracts awarded. One was for gowns for 122 million, which the Department of Health paid them. They're unusable. These are all facts that the Department of Health is now suing PPE MedPro. The National Crime Agency, the NCA, has raided all their offices wow. and so on. So the, the, the big question to be proven which uh, is, was Michelle Moan actively involved and have they benefited? They bought a private jet after that. They bought a big yacht after that. But what can the government right. do right. now? Question. What can the government right. do so, to, to, to ensure confidence? Because do you know what I mean? that's one case. And like, you know, like that is spent, one case. Just, can I mention so, another? Can I mention another? No. <laughs> no, Carol. Finally, this story I found. Strange. A former patient talked a man out of detonating a bomb in the Leeds hospital after spotting him looking upset. A jury has heard. Mohammed Farouk, aged 28, who was accused of planning a terror attack at St James's Hospital, was agitated when Nathan Newbury said he tried to cheer him up. Farouk told Mr Newby the, that he wanted revenge on the hospital and planned to set off a pressure cooker bomb. Farouk of Round Hay is also accused of planning a terror attack at the US base at RAF Menwith Hill near Harrogate. A video has been released showing the arrest of Mohammed Farouk at St James's Hospital. The video shown to the jury at Sheffield Crown Court last week, but released yesterday, shows Farouk telling uh, armed police the patient had talked him out of exploding a bomb. Have a look. Anything else we need to know about? To keep everyone, to keep myself, my colleagues, everything else safe. Okay. Is it, there's a bug there. Just got a bomb what, in it. What's in it? There's a bomb inside. It's a bomb inside. Well, it's not live. It's not what. It's, it's not a bomb alive. inside it, but it's not live. What is it? What's it made from? Pressure cooker. A pressure cooker. It's and what's in it? So it's not live. Gunpowder. There's oh. gunpowder in a pressure cooker. Christ. <laughs> God. A pressure cooker.
Uh, Miss Newby said the defendant described how he was either a student or had worked at hospital for two years, but now he's lost everything and just wanted to get them back for what they'd done. When he asked Farouk what he was carrying in his bag, Farouk told him it was a bomb and that he was planning on walking into the hospital canteen. Mr Newby said that he tried to keep Farouk calm and get him away from the hospital entrance, so he led him to a bench where uh, they talked for many hours. Mr Newby said Farouk eventually said he wanted to hand himself in and passed him a phone to call 999. It was during the emergency call that Farouk produced a handgun. Oh my God. Uh, which later turned out to be an imitation. Prosecutors have told the jury that the pressure cooker bomb Farouk had with him was a viable device modelled on one used in the 2013 Boston Marathon attacks. Though Farouk denied preparing acts of terrorism, he has admitted a number of other offences, including uh, possessing a pressure cooker bomb with intent uh, to danger life or cause serious injury to property. The jury has also been told that Farouk had a grievance against several of his former colleagues at St James's Hospital and had been conducting a poison pen campaign against them. Crikey. That's today's news, but I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>